Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rob. I realize I've been super slow to roll these videos out, uh, but life has been incredibly busy. Um, that being said, I am here now, and in this video we are going to make some hinge holes inside of VCarve Pro because I love this program so, so much. Alright, what I have here is I believe a Euro style hinge that is common enough that I feel like if any of you have been around cabinetry for any point of time or um, just been out looking and shopping around you've probably seen a hinge that looks very similar to this. Um, I believe this style or the dimensions or the pattern whatever you want to call it is fairly universal. Um, because I see, I've seen a lot of different hinges and a lot of them have the same type of pattern. So you've got the bigger center hole and then these two smaller uh, holes with these plastic anchors. Um, so why would you want to do this in V-Carve number one? Well, I don't know why would you. Um, for me, I've been doing a lot of R&D uh, research and development lately on different types of door styles and I... I find V-Carve uh, gives me a lot of freedom just to kind of do whatever I want. Um, and it, the, it, the reason I kind of ended up here is because I was working on a model in cabinet vision of the hinge and I had to make some adjustments and then I kind of came to the realization that I didn't really, really know the dimensions very well. So I was like, you know what, I probably should learn that because the more you know, the better off you are. So I built it in, in V-Carve and so I'm going to impart that knowledge on to you. So what I have here behind me is a, this is correct, um, and I just used the, the uh, right here, right here, the, the dimensions and I just drew some dimensions. So it looks kind of messy, but the, for the most part, these are all important. <clears throat> Uh, the least important uh, dimension is probably this four inches, and this is uh, from the edge of the, the door to the center of the hinge is four inches. And that's on our hinge machine. I'm, I'm honestly not too sure if that's like a standard or not. Uh, so if some of you out there have different spacing, that's perfectly fine. And if you're brand new, and you don't know what you're doing then four inches might be a good place to start because that's what we do and it works out for us all right so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at uh well first we go to 3d here uh well actually i lied to you i don't have any tool paths <laughs> i was going to show you in 3d what this looks like but that's okay we're going to build it we've done one side already or i've done one side already and so we're going to do the same thing over here <coughs> on the right side. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a guide. And I've had some people comment that I use a lot of guides and there's probably better ways of doing things, but I don't know, I just like the guides, they guide me. And once you kinda get used to doing something in a program, you know, I don't know, you find a method and you stick with it. So I like that. I like guides, so we're just going to stick with it. So, okay, what I'm going to do is, in this vertical guide, my overall uh, length of this door slab is 25 inches by, I think, 18. So, we're going to, we're going to, on that 25 inch length, we're going to come in 4 inches, so I'm going to put 21. So, we're going to hit apply. So, this is representing my center line. And the distance... From here, from the back of this hole to the edge of the, uh, the door is roughly uh, 3 sixteenths. Um, I got some calipers on mine and uh, it kind of worked itself out to 3 sixteenths. So what we're going to do here really quick is I'm going to scroll down here. We're going to pull up this guy. Alright, so... We're gonna say 3 sixteenths uh, 0.1875. So we're gonna right click this guide and we're gonna go point, 
1875. I'm going to hit apply. And if we take a look, that looks right where it needs to be. Um, so what we can do to get started is I'm just going to take this circle <coughs> and we are going to put this same circle over there. All right, so how did I get to this size? So if we come to circle, we are going to make our circle. <clears throat> it's going to be an inch and three eighths. So diameter. So we're going to put 1.375 for three eighths. And we are going to hit, I think I can either hit create or I can click. So let's just click. All right, there we go. So we have our first circle. All right, so now, sorry about that. I didn't mean to jerk you around. So if we take this circle, I'm going to hit M on the move uh, to move it. I'm going to slide it down. And I'm just going to zoom in here. I'm sure there's a way to snap it to it, but I haven't figured out how to snap to a guide yet. All right, so now that we've got that in place, we just need to add our two smaller circles. All right, so these are going to be <clears throat> 5 sixteenths in diameter. All right, so if we go to our chart, 5 sixteenths, so 0 0.3125, 0 0.3125, let's hit create. And then I'm going to select this. We're going to edit, copy, edit, paste, and we'll go ahead and drag our other one right here. So we've got everything that we need and we've got this big circle in place. Okay, so the relationship between these two small circles and this big circle is <clears throat> to start from the center point so the center point is 7 eighths of an inch each way. So let's start there. What we're going to do is we're going to right click this guide. And we're going to put relative to guide. And we're going to put, we'll start with 0.875, so 7 eighths. We're going to hit create a new guide. And then let's come and put a negative right in front of that and we'll hit create a new guide again. All right, we can delete this one. So now we know where our holes need to be. Uh, so now we need to know how high do they come up. And these, from the center point of this circle, the bigger circle to the center point of this circle, is 7 sixteenths of an inch. So what I'm going to do here, and this is just what I found to be the easiest way, I'm going to hit a draw a line and it snaps me to the to the center point and once I have that I'm going to select that I hit in for node mode and I'm just going to drag this side out we're only using this line as a reference and instead of trying to get the guide into the middle a line will just let you snap to the half waypoint so we're going to take this hit in again and I'm going to offset this uh, we're going to offset this that 7 16 of an inch. So that is 0.375 if I hit offset. All right, so that brings that up. So I can get rid of this. So now if I hit move, well, I've got to close out of that. If I hit move, I can snap. Make sure snapping's on. It was on. It'll snap right to the center of those two points. Um, go ahead and delete that guide. Delete that guide. All right, we should be good to go. So we're seven eighths, seven eighths to the center this way, seven eighths to the center this way, and we're at five, at seven sixteenths from the center, uh, center point to the center point. All right, so that looks pretty good. It looks like we are we've got what we want so now let's talk about assigning the tool uh, paths to it 
So if we go over to the tool paths, uh, in my case, this is going to be a three-quarter inch thick MDF, machine grade MDF uh, material, which is probably very similar to what you guys are using or if you're doing laminate. Um, you know, melamine, particle board type, type stuff. Um, so what we're going to do is we want to actually go into the material a half inch thick for everything. So actually one, before I go over to the tool, we're going to select both of these little circles. I'm just going to group them together here because they're the same size and so they're going to get the same tool operation and it's just faster. So we'll go ahead and start there. So when it comes to like, okay, if you were to look at a hinge machine that's dedicated to hinging doors, you're going to have plunge bits, meaning you've got a big 35 millimeter, uh, I believe it's 35 millimeter, that could be wrong, uh, bit for the large holes, and then there are 8 millimeter, two 8 millimeter uh, bits for the smaller holes, and so it comes down in one go and it makes the holes. Uh, that's, you know, ideally that's how you'd want to do it, but a lot of times when you have CNC's, you know, we don't have those, like I'm not going to waste a tool for those bits. So luckily we don't need to have them. You just have to have, if you're brand new to CNC machining, as long as the bit is smaller than what you need it to do, it can do that. So in our, in our case, with these two holes, if we go to the pocket tool path, We've got a half inch here, which is too big. So we're going to remove that. And let's go ahead and select from our tool bank. And we're going to pick a quarter inch tool. Because I know a quarter inch will fit in there. All right, so our cut depth is half inch, which is correct. I'm not going to mess with any of this stuff. It's going to be very, it's going to be different to, you know, your machine. You know, how much material you want to take off past this. So we're going to hit calculate. All right, and so we've got those two. So if we just hit preview visible, we can see that that quarter inch bit is doing what we want it to do. So now let's go back to this bigger uh, circle here. And we're gonna pocket this out, but we don't want that quarter inch. Let's say, uh, if, if only you had a quarter inch then you could use that, but let's say in our case, we have a half inch in mill which we do. So we're going to use a half inch in mill. It's just, it's, it's faster. So we're going to hit calculate and we will preview that. And you can see that we have, uh, it looks good. So if I go over here, let's just, uh, let's do the same with this. We're gonna, come on, let's get it. All right, so let's do, we're gonna pocket this out. So we're gonna remove that. Let's select our quarter inch, hit calculate, and then let's go back. And we're gonna select this guy. We'll say we want our half inch end mill to do it. Um, hit calculate, and then let me just go ahead and select this outer rim, and we'll do the final cutout so we can see what it looks like on the outside. 3 8 that's what we want. All right, so let's just preview them all. All right, so here we go. So we got our, our slab door. So if I threw this on the CNC, it would be ready for me to grab one of these hinges and, you know, just... Take a little uh, hammer, rubber mallet, and knock it in. So hopefully you guys found that educational. You learned something new. Um, the more you know, the more you know. So thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.